he's just a hack. He's just an absolute hack. And he gets his ass kicked by his teammates every week. It's just, you know, it's terrible. It's just terrible. We're back here on the Believe in FCS Football podcast for our second show this week, previewing the matchups for the first round of the FCS Football podcast. And we got the screaming out, two different occasions, yelling about the inaccuracies. Did you just shit your pants? What no. Was that? It was what my was chair. It? I was what reaching was in my bag. Okay, sorry. My I, chair. You, okay, to be to be fair, to be fair, a hard mm-hmm. lean and a loud pop usually indicates <laughs> usually indicates one one particular. Would you get thing. with the intro regularly? Would you get through uh, one intro to a show without being a distracted goofball? Uh, well, no, that's not possible. Sean, how are you doing today? This is the second time I've talked to you in two hours. This feels yeah. weird that we just. I'm explored. doing the same. Oh, well, you, you want to bet? I mean, that's that's something good to be happy about. I did win a bet. Cash down. Um, U.S., I don't believe in you in the second half. I'm glad you went up 1-0 in the first half. I'm a cash out, get the hell out, get some money. Do you think – I'm debating – actually, not even debating. I want to see how successfully I, I can go throughout the whole World Cup without watching a single game, just so I can be that guy that, that can make that statement, I don't like soccer and I don't. I refuse to watch it. Oh, I haven't watched a minute. I, I feel like in your I household, though, that's not going to be – with your roommates, that's not going to be possible. Yeah, I'm sure they have it on downstairs. I haven't been down there. Now, Sean, that betting, if our listeners wanted to bet on soccer because they hate their lives, uh, they could do it at Bet Online. Or if they love their lives, they could do it with the FCS first round, which we're going to tell them how they can properly pick those games. Of course they can. You'll always find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends at Bet Online. And as your continued source for all sports wagering information, Bet Online features live betting, free contests, and giveaways all season long. It's always the fastest and easiest way to bet all of your favorite sports and events, whether that's NFL, NBA, the World Cup, uh, NHL, MMA, tennis, boxing, or even golf, and to Bet Online. Dot ag to join and receive your 50 percent welcome bonus with your first deposit make sure to use promo code believe that's b-l-e-a-v to receive your rewards bet online where the game starts thank you sean so today's uh the second episode that's re- being released on monday this one's coming out on monday night we're just this is gonna be a lot more concise we're getting right to the point we're not doing an overall bracket prediction we're kind of removing those thoughts that we had on the last show and solely focusing on these specific games yeah. that are happening in the first round. One of the things that we talked about, it's very unlikely that a lot of these teams make it out of the second round after they win this week. There are some very sloppy teams. There's some weak teams in some of these matchups, and we're going to get to all that. But nonetheless, there are also some competitive programs that have been fun this season thus far. Sean, I want to start things off with Delaware, De- blah, blah, blah. Delaware versus St. Francis University, or University of St. Francis could care less. Uh, this is a, I, that's, this where the be, count, that's where the count went to school. <laughs> <laughs> Go a blue, a hen. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> um, there's also gonna be a lot of indirect shade. I think thrown at the, a, a number of these matchups that I'm just going to, I'm, I'm going to try to be as positive as possible. I will too. This game, however, Sean, I think it's pretty obvious who's going to win this one. Um, albeit we were complaining a little bit about Delaware, they did have a win against Navy who just beat UCF and they also have a win against URI. Their losses come against Villanova, William and Mary, Elon and Richmond. Three of those teams are playoff teams. Now on the other side, St. Francis, they have two notable losses an overtime loss to Akron, which they should have won and Akron sucks. And they also lost to Richmond. So I think we can both agree here. This is an easy win for Delaware. It might be. Uh, St. Francis has not been bad this year. They've been pretty competitive. They have some, um, I mean, they just ran the, the NEC. Uh, they ran the pockets of the NEC. I know it's the NEC. I get it. It's the NEC. I know, it's but they ran, they ran two through plus. it. I know, I know. It's going to go to Delaware, but St. Francis, not a bad team with some pretty good players consistently a game that I was looking in on for fat stats consistent consistently because they were always putting up big numbers uh, in their games in their wins so for as much um discreditation that's not the word I'm looking for you know what I'm saying for as word. much for as much as I want to discredit uh ah. St Francis and, and the NEC 
they they did get some pretty big wins. I mean, looking at this here, Joe, since October, their point totals here, except for Stonehill, 39, 57, uh, 44, 38, 51. So they can score on offense. They can. Uh, so it's a team that Delaware should not take lightly, but also it's a team that is coming out of the NEC. Yeah, um, I kind of disagree. I don't think they should take them at all. Like, I mean, this is, they're going to win. This, this is not a, it's not I, a hard competitive matchup. This is not a competitive matchup. They're not, it, it's immediate. This is probably one of the worst NEC teams we've put into the bracket in a while. Like we usually had some pretty good Sacred Heart teams, some, some really good Duquesne teams with night. I remember Naeem Hines who, no, not Naeem Hines. What was the name of the one kid? Oh my God. They're, this is going to bug, bug the shit out of me. There was one kid from uh, the Duquesne. running back. Yeah, a couple years ago, he was really freaking good. There was a, there was a Sacred Heart running back. Are you talking about Julius Chestnut? Not Julius Chestnut. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look it up in a second uh, when I get to the next matchup. But they they used to Duquesne had like a really good running back a couple years ago. But the, there used to be some competitive teams coming out of the NEC, and that is not the case this year. I am not worried about St. Francis. You shouldn't be Delaware. Are gonna move on, and they get smoked in the next round. Now, we have a very competitive matchup, however, in the other part of their bracket where Fordham is playing UNH. Now, this is a bit of um, it's a bit of a battle between two different styles of teams because Tim Damarat is fantastic. He's very handsome. He's got a very nice mustache. We all speak very highly of him. But separate from that, Fordham doesn't have the best athletes. Um, they're a decent team. They're one of the better Patriot League teams that we've seen in a long time, and it requires... A lot of competitiveness and a lot of good performances for a second Patriot League team to make the playoffs. So credit to them for doing so. Again, lack a lot of athletes in their secondary, lack a lot of athletes uh, in their, on their defense just in general. They're playing up against a UNH team, albeit that has been inconsistent and again has had a softer CAA schedule compared to some others, has a really dominant defensive line led by Josiah Silver. Yes, uh, I, I'm gonna, I might challenge you on the Fordham take here. I know we didn't do fat stats for week 12, but uh, Fordham dismantled Colgate and Tim Demorat in that game. Shocker, 450 yards, six touchdowns. Their running back, Trey Sneed, had 230 yards in a touchdown. And their leading receiver, uh, Dequise Carter, I, I'm Hopefully that's pronunciation. 14 catches, 218 yards, and two touchdowns. Normally the number one guy on Fordham is uh Fotis Cocosiolis. Uh, but this uh. Uh, week it's been it, it was Carter. Uh so I think that this Fordham team has got some players. I think that UNH is going to be playing a very, very high powered offense in Fordham. Now Fordham's defense, ooh, you know, it's horrible. Let's it's let's, let's, horrible. Let, let's try to tighten the belt this week. All right, fellas. But offensively Fordham I think can keep up with any offense in the nation I think they can they just have the players they, they have, did against Ohio they, they air it out they have a good team so I I said it on the preview show I think Fordham moves on over UNH I do I think UNH has not been tested enough this season and when they have it's been way closer than UNH has been comfortable mm -hmm. for so playoff time very hungry Fordham team uh, I think they give uh they give UNH the business but there was AJ Hines was the uh, the name of the uh, player yes. that I was looking for. Uh, very prolific Duquesne running back had a very nice nice career in his time playing for the the Fighting uh, Duquesnes of Duquesne. Uh, I don't know what their mascot is. Um, Sean, nonetheless, this is I think this is probably one of the better matchups because it, it, it's going to be a fun one to watch. Yeah, it's more of a toss up than some of these other matchups that we have in the first round. Our next one's probably one of the worst. Uh, this one's very very. Very lopsided in my eyes. I Eastern Kentucky playing Gardner Webb, and I know that like all the Big South fans are going to be challenging me on this. Eastern Kentucky's really underrated. They are a, a very strong team this year. They've got a win over Bowling Green. They've also beaten Semo, who won their conference. And then the losses that they losses. I don't know. Why I said losses. Losses come to Austin P, who almost made the playoff. They also come to Sam Houston and Jacksonville State, which are effectively FBS teams that are in the process of moving up. Now, Gardner-Webb, their only notable win comes against Campbell. Campbell has underwhelmed tremendously this season. They've got losses to Coastal Carolina, which was a close one. A close one. Fuck, I can't mm. talk. And then they have also lost to Elon and Mercer. 
for some weird reason, they played three FBS teams. I'm not giving him credit for doing that. I really don't have any faith in Gardner Webb. I think Eastern Kentucky is a little bit of a, a, a sleeping, not sleeping giant. That's not the word I'm looking for there. They're better than they're giving credit for. They are. Uh, God, this Big South stunk this year. Yeah. Jeez. Gardner Webb, congratulations on winning that conference and making the playoffs. Very, I'm very, very happy for you from the bottom of my heart that you uh that you're able to compete in this fashion. Regardless, let me get that out of the way. This game, uh, not very exciting. Uh, I don't think many people would say it is. I think we're just ready to see uh who moves on and and, and where we get to next uh, after this one. It's, I mean, there's not much here, right, Joe? It's just no. not much here. At least for our tastes, it's just not, it's just not, yeah. No, there's not. But the other game in their bracket, which is Weber versus North Dakota, this is an actual really fun matchup. Now, Weber has wins against Utah State. They've got wins over UC Davis and then a, a pretty strong win against Montana. The losses that they've suffered were only a three-point loss to Sac State and a three-point loss to Montana State. So they are right there on the edge of, being one of the best big sky teams, they're playing a North Dakota team that lost by 21 to North Dakota State, 17 to SIU, 14 to South Dakota State, but their wins come against Northern Iowa and Youngstown State. I will say as strong of a program as North Dakota is, I feel like they've been hyped up a tiny bit. This should be a win for Weber. I, I would be stunned if Weber doesn't win this game with the tough battles that they've endured and the games that they've won, especially that Utah State win that they have on their resume. Uh, I think they're they're the likely easy victor in this one against uh, North Dakota. Yeah, North Dakota, no slouch. Weber State, though, has been pretty gritty all season. Uh, not a lot of blowout losses, and then their wins have been solid uh, in blowout fashion. So they're a team that keeps it very tight. Uh, they are a team that fights very hard. Uh, and North Dakota, very, very similar in that uh, aspect where their wins are quality wins. All right, and then their, their losses – you're like, ah, okay. You lost, you know, you lost South Dakota State and you lost North Dakota State in not great fashion. But other than that, you're winning, you're winning pretty good games. Obviously, the Southern Illinois loss from earlier in the season, not optimal. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you're, you've been fighting hard. You had a big win against South Dakota. You smoked Indiana State. Uh, so them making it is not that much of a travesty, in my opinion. So uh, uh, Weber, I think, wins this one, uh, but North Dakota is a little grittier than uh, people expect just because the big brothers in state. Now here comes the barnyard ass matchup of the week, which is Montana mm. playing SEMO. We have the obnoxious coin flip champion for SEMO playing the team that didn't belong in the playoff at all because of their pathetic resume and how easily they were battered and beaten up by Montana State this past weekend. Uh, I guess SEMO wins this one. Like, I, I mean, SEMO's had like a decent, decent season and they, they've, they have a, they have a good record. They have a good record at the end of this year, which is why they ended up making it in. And they were able to come down to a coin flip to win their conference. I want SEMO to win. I don't know if, if that's a belief that I'm willing to stake a claim in, but mm. I want them to win because I don't think Montana deserves to be here. SEMO won't win. Uh, Montana will win because it's just going to add to the annoyance. And yeah. it's like, oh, you thought we couldn't make it in. Yeah. We're now the scrappy underdogs that weren't given a chance. And that's how they're going to play it. And they're going to beat Southeastern Missouri. And then they're going to go lose in the second round, which is cool with me. But it's going to be very annoying Grizz fans for an entire week. And then leading up to it, who's ready? Who said they that we weren't deserving this? Let's go show I, uh, them. That's how. That's what we're seeing here, Joe. Unfortunately, uh, am I wrong? You're not. Which is, just, I'm just thinking about it, and it's making me already so fucking mad. I don't. Uh, I, this is why we need Simo to win. We need we need Simo to win. Wait, I can't. I can't do a, a week of that, Sean. I can't do it. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to. I will say I did appreciate the Montana fans that were realistic, that were like, we didn't. I had a couple people that commented on the video in my tweet that were like, yeah, I don't know how we made it in, and oh. I don't think we should be here. There were a couple realistic fans. Sure. Those are the ones that want the coach fired, but that's a that's a separate story, a separate debate for another day. Uh, Southeastern Louisiana, also known as CELA, which I have determined is the pronunciation. Don't care what they think it is. Uh, they're playing Idaho. 
And as we've spoken on Idaho being a bit of a, a sleeper here in the bracket, Selah has a win over Incarnate Word, which is a big victory, an unexpected one that we talked about a lot after that game. And then their loss comes to Texas A&M Commerce, of all teams. Uh, Idaho has a win over Montana. Their losses come to Sac State and UC Davis. But again, as I've said, I am a big fan of Coach Eck and the way that that program is turned around. I think that this is a, a very winnable game for them in the first round. I, as good as Selah has been, I feel as though they're riding off of a little hype from uh, Cole Kelly and what they did over the past couple of years. Yeah, I think um, I think Idaho is a more complete team in this game. I think that they have a team that's – they're not there yet, right? But they're good enough to be in the playoffs, and they're good enough to not draw the wrath from you or I. Mm -hmm. uh, you or I. Uh, pardon me. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Uh, and Sela up and down season. We could celebrate the incarnate word victory as much as we want to, but they lost to Texas A&M Commerce. If you got Commerce in the name of your school, then you're losing to that school. You kind of can't win, lose. To, no. I, I mean, no. It's you don't. I know we have a lot of double directional schools that we uh -huh. uh, that we talk about, but you really don't like losing to the double directional school. What are they? Wait, so they're Texas. Texas A and M is agriculture and mechanics. I'm not sure. I know that so there... is a town in Mexico in, in Texas. Oh, it's a town. Oh, yeah. I thought it was like it was like. Uh agricultural uh mechanic mechanical or whatever the fuck it stands for and then also commerce i thought no, it was it's like they it's, just it's, threw on an extra thing on there i think there's a place in texas called commerce let me see yeah look this up this is important it's a commerce city in texas is texas a m commerce there uh, hunt county texas Situated on the eastern edge of North Texas in the heart of the Texas Blackland Prairies. The town is 45 miles south of the Texas Oklahoma border. Uh, commas, this test, geez. What is population Texas of, stand a for? population of 8,800. 8,800. Wait, wait, one second. I just got to look this up. The Agricultural and Mechanical School of Texas. Okay. That's weird, and I hate that. Um, and I'm picking Idaho solely off of the fact that they lost to that school. Yeah, Sean, yeah. the the next matchup, Furman versus Elon. Um, Furman's been fine, and the Furman fans were pissed off at us the way that we've talked about them over the past couple of weeks. And I'm pissed not off changing. You. I'm not changing my tune. They've beaten Mercer and oh. Chattanooga, which did not make the playoff, and they have a loss to Sanford, which did. Now they got screwed with their first match. Actually, they didn't get screwed. They're justifiably playing a very difficult team in the first round, which is Elon that's beaten Gardner-Webb, Richmond, Delaware, and William & Mary, all playoff teams. Their only losses come to URI and UNH. Sean, your thoughts on this game? Yeah, uh, Furman, not a great draw here because uh, Elon can either be really good or they can be really not good. Uh, I saw, I mean, Elon... <laughs> They go as their quarterback goes. And if Matthew McKay is on, then the team is on. If they're off, then – or if he's off, then it's going to be a lot of uh, up and down in that game. I, I was at the Rhode Island-Elon game. I saw Rhode Island scheme it up, and was, they were able to contain McKay, who didn't have a touchdown. He had a pick, and he only threw for a buck thirty and had a 50% uh, completion percentage. I saw that. I, so I said, this team is not a world beater, even though when they were coming in, uh, they were like one or two in the CAA. But they beat the teams they were supposed to beat. They had a huge win uh, against William Mary very early in the season, though, before they started getting really hot. Uh, uh, regardless, I mean, they they beat out, they beat Delaware by 20, they beat Elon by 24, they beat Hampton by 14. Uh, they lost to UNH by 18, though. So there's some head scratchers and there's some good wins for this Elon team that make you go, which 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 team is going to show up today? The the good one that that knows how to operate as a football team. Or the team that just goes out there and says we really don't care. We're going to go fishing because it's it's beautiful in Elon right now. I'm sure it is, uh, but I, I still stand by. I do believe that Elon is the better football program in this matchup. And like you're talking about, when they do show up and they show up to fight, 
they have really good games. And I th- this is this is a very winnable matchup for them. They're a good CAA program. I would be stunned if Furman comes out with a victory here. Sean, the second barnyard ass matchup of the week, uh, Richmond versus Davidson. Um, Richmond, we know, is a great program. They've got wins over UNH. They've got wins over Delaware. They've lost to Elon and William & Mary. So, like, they kind of split the field there. They beat the two bad playoff CAA teams, but they lost to the two better playoff CAA teams. So it's kind of a toss-up how good they are. We do know how good that passing attack is red, led by Reese Udinsky and they're playing Davidson, which they've fucking, they haven't played anybody. I don't, they stink. And St. Thomas should have won the pie. They, they did win the pioneer, but they should be in the goddamn playoff but because of moving up rules. They can't compete in this game. So instead we got to watch fucking Davidson play and they stink. Yeah. Yeah. I've continuously gotten Dayton and Davidson confused and Dayton. I'd rather see in there because then we would get more Jake Chisholm. Uh, uh, to watch, and he is a spectacular running back for Dayton. Is he still there? I see. I, this is how little I know, and also care about both of these programs and the Pioneer League. Yeah, Jake Chisholm has had some very, very good uh, games this year for uh, Dayton, but Davidson, uh, who see, I a non factor, a non factor team, unfortunately. If they win, I the world doesn't make sense. If they win against Richmond the world ceases to make sense to me. And then I'll just, I'll just determine that today is June 6th and I'll just start walking around bare chested outside my house because it's, it's warm out and it's not 30. Do degrees. that normally on, on no, June 6th? no, but Hey, the world doesn't make sense anymore because then a uh, Richmond would fall to Davidson. If Davidson wins this game, I'll buy a lottery a ticket, na- custom the- numbers, all of them, one, one, all through six lines. If Davidson Dayton Tech, whatever school this is, wins, they're winning a national championship. That's, but they're not going to. No. These are like the times that I used to scream about why Holy Cross was in it. And then they went on to have like a really good competitive game. And then I'm going to be so upset. And I can't, I can't wait until the Davidson fans come out of the fucking woodwork where they're just like, Oh, you've never watched a Davidson game. You're goddamn right I haven't. Why would I watch a Davidson football game? Of course, I've seen Richmond play this year. Of, of course, I've seen most of these other teams play this year. Find me one goddamn person that's not a Davidson alumni that has spent time in their day to take the time to watch a Davidson football game. This sucks. They suck. Yeah, I think uh, we try not to confuse the people and be and – be... We stick up for the FCS. That's what that's what we're here. I don't, to do. I don't stick up for Davidson, but at, at times San Diego is competitive. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. All the uh, 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 all the teams can catch the hands from the show. Basically, there's no. It's it's as as a whole. I think we're positive towards the FCS. We are, but there has to be some realism when it comes to us dissecting and doing our jobs well. But when we get to playoff time. The key thing here is we yes. need to start separating who's actually good and who's not, and that's exactly what I'm doing here. Well, maybe they'll prove us wrong. They probably will, because we're fucking idiots. Uh, at Joe DeLeon, at Sanderson Radio, hit the subscribe button. These games are going to be really fun, Sean. Uh, Sean, you got anything else before we wrap us up? Hack City on YouTube. Hack City on YouTube. Turn on the bell. Drive safe, everybody.